I've been following very carefully the Libyan situation for two months, and I happen to have studied a great deal one point earlier in my life. My last prediction on Libya came true. That is my credibility. I will try not to waste your time. The possible outcomes. Rebel victory, tainted by NATO, rebel victory, direct, broad support, partition of the country, peaceful transition to democracy following ceasefire. The Bishop of Tripoli states this is now possible. We should pursue this and stop the violence and ground all units. And the Gaddafi government is desperate enough to go for it. And there's a possibility of Gaddafi research control. I hate to be biased in the previous point, by the way, but diplomacy should always be exercised before force unless you have a hidden agenda. Gaddafi reasserts control unlikely intervention from the Middle Eastern countries after some flashpoint, which is probably less bad than a victory driven largely by NATO. <clears throat> so have we all called it wrong? The rebel momentum stalled out after everyone started to make their mental calculations. We thought Gaddafi was doing a temporary sweep towards Benghazi. Uh, we didn't believe the rebellion was permanently crushed. But the rebellion has never really counted a, a type of attack we thought it would from the east. So what does that mean from the east for those of you not familiar? Briefly. Here's a nice map of uh, Libya. So what you've got here, breaks out in Benghazi with a raid on a police station, uh, seizing arms from what I've been able to establish. A protest eventually do rise over here where people are shot in both of the cities. Brigades of internal security units are sent to crush the rebellion. Uh, they are unable to. Uh, we think it's going to fall. They get down towards Gaddafi's hometown. Uh, they're on this highway in this area which is full of strategic water pipes and oil pipes um, and these are very major uh, irrigation systems and they all stalled out here then down in here you've got the indigenous bear bear that lived here before the Arabs which Gaddafi is actually descended from but he seems to have some sort of pathological distaste for he thinks that if you think you're a bear bear you're just a colonialist because they're a fiction but it's quite obvious that they do exist and they speak an ancient language and they're skilled. They're still rather martial people living up in the mountains and they've been able to be self-sufficient in capturing arms from Gaddafi. They're the real uh, swashbucklers in this campaign. And then Gaddafi himself has gained sympathy by his wily tactics of adapting to the Allied bombing and his using crop dusters to come in and blow the tanks in Maserato, which has to rank as one of a morale boosting feat, which is not what the Allies want. The Allies do not want Gaddafi pulling off daring do. Because that's, if he's going to go down anyway, I'm sure he'd love that. And uh, the Allies don't want him to love anything, it appears. So we have this rebel in the East Stala problem. The reason it happened, in my opinion, is that they weren't giving their sons in great enough numbers, one in 300. A lot of countries would contribute one in uh, 40 out of households. Uh, so why are there so few of them? Perhaps it's because these people have universal health care and education. But what do I know? We need to talk to some Libyans from both sides who've lived there and tell us what they think about it. That's what we need to do next. We thought this was a domino, and we did not know Libya had the highest human development index in Africa. Showing you that. So, here, let's see if I can do this. Um, okay. You'll notice the dark blue countries have the highest human development. Then what you've got is the, the lighter blue. And what you'll find is that Libya has a higher human development index, higher educational and infant mortality and so forth than Saudi Arabia or uh, uh, Iran or Algeria or most of these Eastern European countries. It's only two points below Chile and Argentina. And it exceeds even Poland. So we didn't know that. So that means that we are attacking a system that had built up a very impressive set of social objective achievements. Now, that is not nice. 
let's just say that. Okay, so getting back to the core point, and I don't mean to flip. Uh, I don't really have time to go over all the intricacies of it. Okay, <clears throat> so I beg your pardon. Having technical difficulties here. We write back. Here we are. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so he has a huge gold reserve. Obama has asserted solemnly that a massacre was averted in Benghazi that would have stained the conscious world. How can he say that? How does he know what would have happened? He could have said it might have happened, but he, he sat with a straight face. He was lying because nobody knows what was going to happen that I've heard. Then Gaddafi tried to introduce the gold dinar. Uh, the gold dinar was, would have crashed the Western banking system because we're based on fractional reserve, meaning 10% down. Whereas a gold dinar would be 100% reserve, and guess which people would gravitate towards? It would have a weight that would collapse paper monies because you wouldn't need to, you would have an option. You'd, you could have 100% back currency, uh, and money would gravitate there, and it could be very destabilizing to the Bank of International Settlements, which runs the whole banking system. And that's not a conspiracy theory, it's administratively accurate. Everything flows to the Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland. We also didn't know he had created the most ambitious and successful irrigation system ever created by tapping a underground sea they discovered in the Nubian Basin, is what it's called, uh, on the border of Egypt and Libya. So he was creating a utopia under a severely repressed political climate of absolute Islamic devotion. So you have a socialist government providing benefits to people trying to shape a uh, morally perfect utopia and preparing great things for his people, but within this, uh, what some people would say as a uh, surreally mad uh, uh, framework. <clears throat> so, so, the history of Libya briefly. Uh, they were settled by Phoenicians in 800 BC, conquered by, became part of the Kingdom of Numidia in 201, uh, conquered by the Romans in 146, by the Ottoman uh, Arabs uh, under uh, the new religion of Islam in 643, Ottomans in 1551, Italians invaded the Ottomans part of the First World War times and uh, seized these provinces from them, Tripolitania, Fezzan, Cyrenaica, Tripolitania is in the west towards Tunisia. Cyrenaica is influenced by Egypt in the uh, east, and Fezzan is a uh, uh, you know uh, desert area, uh, more uh, sub-Saharan in nature, with these uh, uh, nomadic tribesmen who traditionally traded up and down uh, the Sahara, crossing the Sahara to trade with the. You know, West African blacks and the North African Hamitic peoples, if I may say it that way. So in 1911, the Italians conquered. In 22, they turned fascist, which meant they were incredibly cruel to the Libyan uh, uh, people, who were uh, largely Arab, but also Berber and uh, all these other sorts. And uh, so they had a, a local emir of Cyrenaica, Said Mohammed El Idris, and he fought them all the way up until the end of World War II where it fell under British and French uh, protectorate administration uh, uh, after El Alamein, October 43. So in 51, the monarchy was handed over to Idris with a parliament. Uh, and then in 61, he liquidated the parliament, technically a federal government, became a pure monarchy, got worse for people outside of Cyrenaica, more corruption, concentration, the uh, nepotistic friends of the royal family, so there was an officer's coup. Gaddafi participated, came the thought of himself as a Che Guevara of Africa, funded every socialist or Arab or any Western armed resistance movement, aka what we now call terrorist groups, that time called revolutionary armed resistance or freedom fighters or whatever. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> he founded a, a Pan African Legion, and that Pan African Legion is part of this issue with his. Uh, quote unquote mercenary troops. Well, not quote unquote, he has lots of mercenaries, it's true. But if you're fighting against NATO, you're going and you have 10 billion in cash and 112 tons of gold, what are you going to do? <clears throat>
not that I want to sound like a good hobby sympathizer. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, to, in 1993, uh, the Army and the Warfalo tribe had an alleged coup. I just want to say that much. And um, <clears throat> so I want to dedicate this piece basically to heeding the call to halt bombing from the Catholic Bishop of Tripoli. End of part one.